what was really, you know, kind of your introduction into the entertainment industry? It's funny because I don't, I don't view myself as someone that's in the entertainment industry, although I kind of got grandfathered in, I guess you can say. Yeah, um, I don't look at myself as an entertainer or anything like that. I am a person that worked as a fashion stylist for many years. I'm from Oakland. Let's start with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Oakland, I, California. I live in Oakland. Did you? Yeah. So you well, get I, it. I went to UC Berkeley. Okay. So, you get it. So I went then, to Berkeley High. There you go. Yeah, okay. I lived right across the street from there. Yeah. yeah. So you get it. You know Blondie's Pizza and the whole thing. All that. So that's my life. So I'm from Oakland. So I'm a very down earth, regular Oakland girl. Mm -hmm. I had a love of fashion my whole entire life. My aunt owned stores in Oakland. I worked for my aunt since I was seven. And I uh, ended up moving to LA at 19. Went to the Fashion Institute and kind of the rest is history. I uh, became a stylist. I, um, my first job was with Biv 10 Records. Ah, Michael Bivens. Michael Bivens and Bozak, actually. Todd Russo, which was at the time not Faith's husband, but became Faith's husband. So you were working like boys to men and stuff like that? No, I was actually, this is even before them. This is Subway uh, 702. Ah, okay. Early, early days. Okay. So I did Biv 10 first. And then I moved on and did, they had artists like Eric Reed, jazz artists, and MC Brains. and MC Brains. I know. I, I, this remember, is really, I actually remember that name. See? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this was like 94? Like the 1900s of 94. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, sure. So, so how did you actually get your first break in, ter in terms of being a stylist? Because, you know, every girl wants to be a stylist. Well, but. you know, now it's such a cliche job title. Yeah. Everybody's a stylist. I can walk through a mall and everybody's, I'm a stylist, you know, my stylist. And they like work in Gap and they're everywhere. They're right. like working at Otis, uh, the cookie spot, yeah. the pretzel spot. They're all stylists on the side. Exactly. Whereas... Um, when I got started, I, I actually went to the Fashion Institute. I actually learned color theory and the psychology mm. of buying and what, what makes a person buy things out of a window and how you sell. Um, I learned marketing. So, you know, my major and everything was a little different than the you meet somebody and call yourself a stylist. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You came up in the time of like Groovy Lou and some yes, of those guys. Yes, Groovy, That's, June. Uh, yeah. You know, Mike B, all those people, yeah. Absolutely. So, so you started off with with Michael Bivens, and then who did you end up working with later on in your career? It was a snowball. I mean, I did everyone from Sugar Free. Sugar Free, okay. <laughs> I did everyone from Moke and Steph. What was it like to style Sugar Free? Well, let me tell you, <laughs> it was such a good experience. That's the day I met Lauren Hill uh -huh. on a Sugar Free shoot. What was Lauren Hill doing on a Sugar Free anything? <laughs> I mean, on honestly. a sugar-free bus, yeah. eating sugar-free candy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Drinking sugar-free I mean, For soda. anyone who don't know sugar-free, he's a, he's a special one. He's, he's a little different than, you know what I mean? But you know what? <laughs> if you listen to what he's actually saying, he speaks a lot of truth. Uh, his delivery may be a little... It's all, it's all pimp. It's all pimp lyrics. It's pimp lyrics, but if you listen to what he's actually saying, like, you know, break it down to, like, the common denominator and say, okay, okay he's making total sense. Yeah. Oftentimes, no, I like Sugar Free. I'm not. I'm not speaking badly on <laughs> Let him. Let me at say all. this: I don't own his album, but I did get a check, and I was styling him. His label okay. called me, and I was styling him. And the shoot was at a place called the Bellage Hotel, which mm -hmm. is now known as the London. And uh, I was on the elevator carrying literally bags, schlepping clothes up to the penthouse where we were doing the photo shoot. And Lauren Hill and her entourage walked on the elevator. She had a performance and. Uh, her stylist apparently didn't FedEx or the FedEx lost her package. It was my break. And they, uh, I, I handed her a card with all my bags. I was like, if you ever need anything, you know, call me. And sure enough, she called me. Hmm. And uh, many, 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 many moons uh, later, I just styled her. I styled her when she was with the Fugees. I styled the Fugees, the whole entire group for a while. So, so um, you, you were with her during the miseducation of Lauren Hill Oh, days? I did the whole, yeah. That was so, my so whole that whole kind of style that she had. Bangles. Were, ah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Bangles, clunky shoes, big hoops, leather. Yeah. She was, you know, the, the, the cool thing about Lauren Hill was that she was like, I think, the only female rapper that was able to sort of kind of be respected as a rapper and be sexy, but not, she wasn't selling sex. 
it was still a very earthy kind of mix between the two, you know what I mean? And kind of pushing the whole self-respect thing and not having the ass and titties out, or, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Like, cause well, you, you know what it was, is when I got with Lauren, you know, that was what they wanted for me, is to feminize the whole look a little bit. Lauren was always, you know, very tomboy. stylish, but very, very tomboy. tomboy yeah. She dressed like the other pros and clef. Right. So it was always cargo jeans. pants. Yeah, right. Tims. Right. Twists, you know, and yeah. then she'd throw on a hoop with it. And I was like, but your legs. See, I'm always about finding the, like, beautiful body part and saying, your legs, Lauren. And Lauren's legs were like frog legs with, like, the big muscle the dancer legs, they were mm -hmm. awesome. So we ran with the legs. What, what, what happened exactly to Lauren? Cause it was like that album, didn't it go diamond or, or something close to it? Um, she was very successful. I don't know what happened. I can't speak to what she, happened. Cause like she was on top of the world. Like she could have been. Who's to say she's not still on top of the world? I'm not saying she's not on top of the world in terms of her own personal life, but I'm saying in terms musically? of musically. But you know what? You know, that album was, at a pinnacle and then like she had like an acoustic album and then that was it sure. like yeah. it was it was a you know what i mean it was yeah. very much a drop off in terms of out musical output but sometimes and i i know this from kind of transitioning from being behind the scenes to in front of you can want out you can have moments when you want to just check out not check out literally like die but check yeah. out as in you want to go off the radar and kind of live a normal life and kind of kind of uh, become self, you know, kind of introspective and the whole yeah. nine. So I don't know if that happened or sometimes men can, you know. Yeah, mess with the Marley boys, you know? Boys in general, <laughs> they can flip you out and flip you back around and have you confused about everything you're doing. You know, I mean, she had kids, she, she became a mother. And Your feng shui like gets off, yeah. <laughs> it happens. You know, I, I just think, you know, I mean, I was a fan, you know, first You're still foremost. a fan, I hope. I'm still a fan, but I only have that one album to That's be a all fan. Right. You so know, I mean, and the Fuji's album, but I thought, I honestly thought that her album surpassed anything that the Fuji's did. Oh her, man, personally. that album was incredible. incredible. Let me tell you, that woman wrote, I, I, would be, I believe, like 90% of the album. She sketched the cover picture. People don't know really? that. Really? Yes. Didn't know that. She um, was a, just a mastermind and she was very hands on. And she helped me to understand how important being meticulous. I'm very meticulous, but she's 10 times more meticulous than I am. And you, I couldn't have had a better teacher, I'd say, and she was younger than I am. Mm -hmm. So uh, Lauren is just dope. Her mind is just almost genius, I would say. Who were some of the other people you worked with? I worked with Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. I did the whole Aftermath thing, like a very beginning. I can't even remember some of the artists I styled. Aftermath had so many, I did their whole click in the beginning. So who was in the beginning though? Because the beginning was a little weird. They we had, had like a, singers and it was, yeah, it, that, I was doing everything they had. I, I know remember that. that first Aftermath album, the Aftermath Presents was sort of not all that great. Dre and Curtis and yeah, we did yeah. a bunch of, um, a bunch of little videos and stuff by the beach and all. That's when I still lived in LA. Mm -hmm. I mean, I styled a little bit of Patti LaBelle, Aretha Franklin, Shaka yeah. Khan, wow. okay. Michelle and Deggio Cello. So I kind of range from, you know, neo soul to straight up hip hop. It just kind of ranges. Jay-Z, um, Nas. Jay-Z and Nas. Yeah. What was it like to style Jay-Z? Awesome. He was very, uh, Jay is so cool and funny and just easy. Like, come on, I don't want all the fussy. I don't want all the colors and all the, you, ah, give me a t-shirt and some jeans and some lotion and let's keep it moving. You know, he was very, yeah, easy. Well, Jay is one of those style trendsetters, though. Sure. You know, I mean, I change guess he, clothes and go. I did that video. <laughs> yeah, I remember moving to New York, and then Jay suddenly in a video had the baseball cap with the, you know, the brim totally flat, and suddenly everybody started doing that. Oh. Jay wore the throwbacks. Everyone wore throwbacks at the point that Jay said, you know, no more throwbacks. You know, it's button downs now. And they did it. There I was wearing a button down. Good, <laughs> you know, and it, it was like it, it was one Yay. of those it was one of those things where it's like, you know, we we don't buy X fives, we you know, we don't we don't drive X fives, we Give buy them for baby, baby mamas. mamas. 
Right. At that point, the X5 became the uncool the car. The whack car. Even though it was like, yo, what's wrong with this car? This is like the, you hated the BMW <laughs> SUV. Like, how can you not like this car? Like, you would no trade one. that thing in. Like, what? I'm whack right now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty well, much. Jay, because you know why? And I, and I swear, in my class, I teach a class, and I, I speak to how it's so important to have confidence in what you do and what you say. I, I preach this to my coworkers. I preach it all the time how you can't sound unsure when you're delivering anything. And if you do, you'll, people will be like, mm, they don't really know what they're talking about. And then they'll sun you. So Jay's delivery on everything is bam, in your face. It is what it is. What he says goes. E.F. Hutton. He yeah. rolls out. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I was like crossover music, you know, so it feel good, man. Well, I don't look at nothing by it, you know, not a bias. It's, so, it's, it's good, man. You make music so people will recite it, and that's what they don't recite the song. I mean, yeah, it seems kind of grimy on a moral issue and all of that, but shit, as people get older and all that, you got you got men who are like 50-something years old marrying girls who's like 28. 20. <laughs> <laughs>